Hey, good morning, aspiring authors. Today is Sunday, February 18th, and it is maybe about 8.15 in the morning here in Champaign, Illinois. My lighting is uh, not very good yet. Um, I just wanted to talk to you this morning about um, what I'm doing today. So I am actually on my, getting ready early, drinking my coffee, um, going to drive to Chicago, which for me is between a two and a three hour drive. And the reason I'm going to Chicago is because I'm traveling up there to meet a woman from Ireland. Now, the woman I'm meeting, her name is Emma Bell, and she has a podcast called The Shift, oh, The Inside Shift. So now here's just a little story for you of one of the reasons that I get so like excited over podcasts and how it can transition your life in ways that you could never imagine. So probably about, I don't know, six months ago or more, I did a podcast with this woman, Emma Bell, and it's the, the podcast is called The Inside Shift. And, you know, it was just random, I, you know, just random podcasts that we had pitched and she said yes. And she is in Ireland and it turns out we had a lot of like similarities in, in life. So she was a former judge and I own a debt collection company. So I'm in court or I mean, I'm not in court, but my company is in court a lot. Um, and also she was very fascinated from the fact that I had like sort of come from this diverse background of having what some people would consider to be nothing or what some people would consider to have like a very troubled background because I was on my own at 16 years old. I had um, very little guidance and very little resources to my name, but I still managed to like graduate high school. And then of course, you know, I have my daughter who passed away in 1993 and she wanted to know what was it about me that enabled me to pick up the pieces to build a business that ended up being an eight figure business. And what does that look like? It means in my career as a debt collector, I've actually collected $40 million. And I know that sounds weird, but I'm actually proud of the fact that I've returned $40 million to my local community of, of you know, just like central Illinois. Okay, so anyway, here's the point of the story. So today I'm traveling up to see her because she is writing a book. She's writing a book with like a team of writers who, um, how can I say, like, I don't know the right language to put to this, but she's writing a book about extraordinary women. So she's actually traveling the world looking for a particular, um, I don't know if it's like a style of woman, but a woman who has overcome unspeakable odds and, and built up a resiliency, but all, but turned that into ultra success turn that into massive success and i know that like another podcast that i was on um with recently with daniel geffen when he saw me on camera he's like i can't believe what i'm looking at right now i mean knowing your story knowing where you came from how is it that i'm watching you and you actually look okay in fact you look you look better than okay you don't look broken you, you look enlivened and so she's writing this business or she's writing this book about this and i was one of the women chosen that she's featuring in the book so she's actually flying around she came here from ireland i mean i just i don't even know how to feel about this like i i'm i'm actually struggling searching for the meaning in it because i feel like you know i was out to dinner with a friend and i was telling him this and i feel like what must it be like for the other person to have to it's like need to get in a more comfortable spot um what must it be like for the other person that I'm sitting there having dinner with to listen to me say these things like, oh, this woman's writing a book about my life. I mean, it's not just my life. I mean, she's writing a book about other women too, but this is a very select group of women. And like, what is this going to mean for me moving forward? I'm just sort of having this crisis of meaning. Anyway, why am I in here babbling on? And like, I hope I don't sound like I'm bragging, although I do think that bragging is a, a lost art that we should do more of. As a matter of fact, I do do my daily um, desires diary where I choose three things every day to brag about. My point is because it started with a podcast. So I've been telling you guys and telling you and telling you and telling you that podcast to me is the easiest way 
to get from where you're at now to where you want to be. Because here's the thing, like I'm not where, I'm not where I want to be. I mean, like I look at people like Gabrielle Bernstein and Marie Forleo and I think that's where it's at for me. But we have to embrace the stage that we're in right now. We have to understand that we're in this awkward place and we have these goals and it's like this this we're building towards something and, and it's bubbling up inside of us. But we but understanding that that journey isn't necessarily a graceful one. And you learn all kinds of things and you make mistakes along the way. But you've got this rare opportunity to learn from someone like me who might be just a little bit farther ahead than you. I wish I had the mentor who had 100,000 followers who was willing to teach me how to get to that next step. But like, I want to tell you guys how to get to that next step. All right. So you've, you've, you've got, you're writing a book proposal. Obviously, you have a message to get out into the world. Let me tell you something. The social media game is such like it's the new rap race. Okay. It's like we constantly have to figure out what to post, when to post it, what kind of video to do. If you go on a podcast, it's so much easier and you align yourself with people and, and events and things that you never knew were even possible. Like this, this woman, this other woman. So, you know, first of all, I've got this woman writing like some sort of book that she's going to feature me in. But like another woman that I was on a podcast with, she was so like, felt so connected to me that she asked me to come to Toronto and speak at her event. She's um, having like a holistic event for um, holistic entrepreneurs. Okay. So like, I'm not a holistic entrepreneur. What can I do to help these people? She said, Mary, I want you to talk to them about writing because so many holistic practitioners. So, you know, we're talking about like acupuncturists, people that do that organic dentistry, um, chiropractors, you know, think of whole, like nutrition coaches, all of these people. She goes, they have books inside of them. And she said, I want you to come and talk to them about the books they have inside of them. And of course I said, yes. And so I'm going to go speak at her thing from a podcast. Okay, so already another one, another woman um, is having, she's actually having a series of retreats around the country and she wants me to come and do, teach a workshop at her retreat that she, she's going on like, let me just tell you this. I have so many opportunities coming in. I can't actually keep track of them myself. Like when am I going to Toronto? So Irene, um, I think that that event is in October. If you live in Toronto, and of course you're following me on whatever, um, I will be sure you will, of course we'll be sure to let you know. So anyway, let me get back because I can be a little ADD on these videos, especially when I don't have a script and I'm just like trying to talk to you guys from my heart. When I tell you that I want you to go on a podcast, I am not creating online courses to try to pad my pocket because I assure you, there are so many easier ways for me to make money. I'm doing it because I want to teach you how to get your messages out into the world. And going on a podcast has been the easiest way for me. That doesn't mean it's the easiest way for everybody because some people are like masters at social media. I'm not, okay? In fact, I actually kind of find it annoying and I think that I think that the majority of the content I see on Facebook is superficial. It's it's kind of dumb. It's like, you know, oh, you read this little one sentence blurb on a meme and that's supposed to change your life. Are you fucking kidding me? No, that's not that's not real meaning behind anything because the real meaning takes time to unfold. The real meaning of what you're trying to say is something that you need a medium to express yourself. You need a platform. And these podcast hosts, they're doing the work for you because they already have the audience. Okay. Like I've had a hundred people at least join my Facebook group, Fearless Ambition, just because of the Sorta Awesome podcast. I had another hundred join from Shameless Moms. I had another hundred join from Happy Vibrant Women. What is the value of having 300 people join my group that A, have heard my message, so they know that I'm like, 
direct as hell and they resonate with that style because some people need that person to be like, oh honey, you know, life is okay and, and you know, just be gentle with yourself. That's not me. That's not my message. That might be your message and that's okay. But what is the value of having 300 people join my community that resonate deeply with my message. People that reach out to me and tell me it's from a podcast. You can't get that kind of connection anywhere else that I know of. I mean, maybe you can get it with Facebook lives, but like, here's the thing. Facebook lives are great. And you know what? On my Hay House live series, I might have 20, 30,000 views of that Facebook live. But when you look at the stats, when you actually go in and you look at the analytics, those 20,000 views were people who like clicked on it for 10 seconds and clicked off. Is that a fan? No. This morning, you know, like I'm kind of a nerd. So as I'm driving three hours to Chicago, I have to plan the audios that I'm going to listen to. And I'm going to listen to Tim Ferriss's episode with this guy talking about a thousand true fans and how it is more valuable for you to have a thousand true fans than a hundred thousand followers who've just liked your page. And you know what? I agree because those 300 women that joined my Facebook group, those people who heard me on can I pick your can I pick your brain and like reached out to me and think like they like the way my mind thinks and those are my people that's the way you know when we talk about this magical force that's going to like all of a sudden just bring you the people who are your tribe or be, bring you the people who resonate with you you know what it's because of work and so okay i got to read some of these Da, 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 da. Okay, Cheryl's on. Hey, Cheryl. Cheryl, wish me luck. Like, Cheryl, what's your take on this? Like, I said I'm having this crisis of meaning. Like, what do you think about I'm going to Chicago to meet up with this woman and she's writing a book and I and I think that, like, anyway, you should tell me later because, like, I, I don't know. Like, I feel, I feel so honored, but yet I'm not telling my friends because I don't want to come across like some, like a braggart who's, you know, lost touch with who I really am. Anyway, you guys see my awesome vision board back there? Vision boards, they work. All right, from a PR's perspective, it's almost unheard of to grow your platform from zero to 30,000 in 12 months. Mary is, that's true. Thank you for acknowledging that, Cheryl. Um, I have, I've actually, um, I've added another 5,000. So now, now I'm up to 35,000, but that was at the beginning of February because what I do is I track my numbers on the first day of every month. So, you know, um, who knows what it'll be on March 1st because I actually don't look at them except for um, once a month. So, you know, I'll just give you like one little tip. So one of the things that I recently did, and I know that Karen K has got a decent size um, email list, actually around the same size as mine, that I actually uploaded my email list to LinkedIn and that doubled my LinkedIn um, connections and followers. So, you know, and it's not like I have a huge LinkedIn. I went, I went from 16,700, wait, not 16,000, 1,679 connections on LinkedIn to 3,358, which means I doubled my LinkedIn in um, something like six weeks. And I did that just by uploading my email list to LinkedIn. They're not stealing the email addresses, but what they are doing is sending an invitation to those people. So instead of you like connecting one person at a time, like sending a friend request, imagine if you could send like your entire email list. So even if your list is only 500 people um, or 30 people, if you get those people connected on LinkedIn and then you're like posting your blogs on LinkedIn on their platform, then those people are more likely to see it than versus open your your email because I'm sorry to tell you but the value of an email list and this is something I've recently learned the value of an email list is not in sending people a million emails and getting them to open it because there are a lot of other things you can do with that email list um, which has to do with like Facebook marketing and some other things okay so I am <laughs> rambling now and I don't want to um, I don't want to do that but I want to tell you guys that I have massive love for you and I want you to check out my podcast class we with with Cheryl obviously Cheryl assisted me on that but you know Cheryl and I um, have been Cheryl and I this was more my lead like Cheryl helped me with the podcast online class but you know this was more my lead because it's my um, it's sort of my, my claim to fame, if, if that's okay to say. But listen, 
five phase formula to get yourself booked on a podcast will absolutely take you to that next level that you want to go to. And we have it on pre-sale. So what I mean by pre-sale is pre-sale is like Cheryl and I don't have to invest much in the marketing yet, but we, in order to cover our cost, it's $97. So your, your five phase formula to booking yourself on a podcast will teach you to do what I did, but without all the early mistakes that I made. So like, for example, one of the mistakes that I made early on was not having a tracking uh, system. Cheryl, can you post, because I'm like, actually not dressed. I have a shirt on, but no pants. Cheryl, can you post the link for the um, pre-sale on podcast, pretty please, since Roxanne's not around to do what I say? Um, so when we're going to officially launch this course on March 10th, the other thing you can do is you can go to, you can join the pre-party podcast pop-up group, which is just sort of an experimental group that Cheryl and I are doing. It's this concept of a pop-up group. So the pop-up group is only going to be live until April 10th, and then I'm going to archive it. So it's going to be kind of like get in, get out, network with the other people. I've got a lot of podcasters, like hosts, watching what I'm doing because I'm in some other groups, and they're fascinated by what I'm doing. They're fascinated by the fact that I want to teach people how to be a guest on a podcast because there's so many people teaching how to have your own own podcast and that's not what I'm doing okay so the early mistakes I made were not having a tracking system that was horrible because then when I needed to go back and like ask myself or provide a list of shows I'd been on I couldn't do it because we had to like literally try to search through emails to figure out what shows we'd been on can you believe that or I would actually have to do Google searches with my own name plus podcast to find out shows that I've been on a year ago because we had no tracking system. You know, another thing was I didn't have the right media information. You know, we had a nine page media kit and it's so bad. It had four different bios because like, here's part of the problem of being me. It's like, is she an entrepreneur? Is she a coach? Like, what the hell is she? Is she a spiritual teacher? Is she a personal development guru? Whatever. The truth is I'm all of those things. So we tried to create four different bios, but the problem is we put them all on one document, which was a mess for the host to try to, it's not the host's job to figure out who you are, okay? It's your job to match your bio to their show. Anyway, these are all the things that we teach you in the five phase formula for booking yourself on a podcast. We're talking about things like creating your list, writing your email templates, getting your interview topics down so that they're sexy and they are a hook. You know, you've heard me say before, talk about the hook, not the book. Anyway, all right. I really, I love you guys so much. Um, wish me luck today. Please be sending me positive thoughts. I, I am so, I, I just don't even have words to understand, um, I don't have mere words to understand how I feel about being featured in this book. You know, I guess I feel like, I don't know. I, I don't know what to say. I, I just, I guess I'm thrilled, but I'm also hope that I can live up to whatever it is she's looking for. All right, darling. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Hey, this is Mary. Thanks so much for watching. Check out a free chapter of my book, Conscious Communications at maryshores.com forward slash free chapter. The link is in the description below.